child of Israel, I heard the sound. Please give me the strength to stand today. the truth. 
tribulation, I know I must stand. For a new heaven, a new earth, show me the way to Zion. I'm on my knees, laying my life on the line. I'm begging, please, please don't. Shalom and Barakatham, peace and blessings. We are the Gathering of Christ Church, New York City, a family who adheres to the sacred laws of the earth administered to Christ down to his father's children of Israel, whom are scattered abroad. We would like to invite you to join us in our law classes, which are held every Sabbath beginning at 1 p.m. during the winter season and 2 p.m. during the summer season under the tutelage of regional elder Gabar and leadership. Since nations are built on families, our focus is to awaken our people, bring them back to their original heritage which was once forgotten, and to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments, together as one under Christ. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. We're going to face a homeland towards the east. We're going to pray in. We ask all sisters to cover their head. And all brothers to uncover theirs. Oh, we give thanks to the Most High. God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of all gods. Father, we come to you and we ask for mercy for any sins that we may have committed in your eyes, Father God. And also, Father God, we are thankful for your sabbat, Father God. Let your spirit fall on each man, woman, and child this evening so we can continue to sanctify your day of rest, your day of glory, your day of wisdom, Father God. And we ask, Father God, thank you for the word that's about to come forth. May it resonate in our hearts, our mind, and our soul, so we can continue to go out and reach our people that's out there in the world, Father God. So in this manner, we pray, our Father, our Father, Father who art in heaven, who art in heaven, holy be thy name, holy be thy name. Your kingdom will come. Your kingdom will come. Your will be done. Your will be done on earth. On earth, as it is done in heaven. As it is done in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts. And forgive us of our debts. As we forgive our debts. As we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. Because you are the kingdom. You are the kingdom. You are the power. You are the power. You are the glory. You are the glory. Forever. Forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Shemar. Shemar. Yasha Allah. Yasha Allah. Ahaya. Ahaya. Allah Haina. Allah Haina. Ahaya. Ahaya. Akar. Akar. Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God. The Lord our God. Ahaya. 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 Is one God. Is one God. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to continue. Um, we're going to please remain standing as we read the commandments out of Exodus 20. Okay. 
So are we about to read the word of the Most High? We in Exodus 20, verse 1. And the Most High spake all these words, saying, And the Most High spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy power. I am the Lord thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any greater image. Thou shalt not make unto thee any greater image. Or any likeness of anything. Or any likeness of anything. That is in heaven above. That is in heaven above. Or that is in the earth beneath. Or that is in the earth beneath. Or that is in the water under the earth. Or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Nor serve them. Nor serve them. For I, the Most High, thy power. For I, the Most High, thy power. And my jealous power. And my jealous power. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers. Upon the children. Upon the children. Unto the third. Unto the third. And fourth generation of them that hate me. And fourth generation of them that hate me. And show mercy unto thousands of them. And show mercy unto thousands of them that love me. That love me. And keep my command. 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 Thou shalt not take the name of thy power of God in vain. Thou shalt not take the name of thy power of God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless. And take his name in vain. That take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day. 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 To keep it holy. To keep it holy. Six days thou labor. Six days shalt thou labor. And do all thy works. And do all thy works. But the seventh day. But the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord. Is the Sabbath day of the Lord. Thy power. Thy power. In it. In it. Thou shalt not do any work. Thou shalt not do any work. Thou, thou know thy son, know thy son, know thy daughter, know thy daughter, thy man servant, thy man servant, know thy maid servant, know thy maid servant, know thy cattle, know thy cattle, know thy stranger, know thy stranger that is within thy gates, that is within thy gates. For in six days, for in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, the sea, and all that in them is, and all that in them is, the rest of the seventh day, and the rest of the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thy father and thy mother. That the days may be long. That thy days may be long. Upon the land. Upon the land. Which the Lord thy power giveth thee. Which the Lord thy power giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Against thy neighbor. Against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Nor his manservant. Nor his manservant. Nor his maidservant. Nor his maidservant. Nor his ox. Nor his ox. Nor his donkey. Nor his donkey. Nor anything that that is thy neighbors. Nor anything that is thy neighbors. Amen. 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 All right, all so we're going to continue reading out the law. We're going to ask some um, brothers to come. Um, we're reading out the book of Genesis 49. We're going to start at verse 1. When you did say come? Come. Uh -huh. All right, we're in the book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourself together, that I may tell you that which shall be for you in the last days. Gather yourself together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel, your father. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, and the father did. And he went up to my couch, 
Verse 5. Simeon and Levi are virgins. Instrument of cruelty are in their habitation. O my soul, come not thou into their secrets, unto their assembly, my honor. Be not thou united, for in their anger they slew a man, and in their self will they dig down a wall. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Come on. Come on. Come on. Shabbat Shalom, family. Brother Nestle, tribe of Eba, nation of Israel. I'm reading Genesis 49 and 8. Judah art he whom thy brother shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemy. Thy father's children shall bow, shall bow down before thee. Judah is in line's wealth. For from thy prey, my son, thou art gone up. He, he stooped down, he crouches as a lion, and as, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a law given from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Binding his foes unto the vine, and his donkey's coat, coat unto the until the choice vine. He washes his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. And his eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white as milk. Zebulon shall dwell, Zebulon shall dwell at the heavens of the sea, and he, and he shall be for an heaven of sh havens of ships, and his border shall be unto, Z unto Zidane. 14 and last, Issachar is a strong donkey crouching down between two burdens. Come on. Come on. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Benjamin, nation of Israel. Reading from Genesis 49 and 15. And he saw that rest was good, and the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. Dan shall judge his people, as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, and adder in the path, that biteth the horse heels, so that his rider shall fall backward. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Out of Asher his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. Verse 21, alas. Mustali, as a hind with that loose, he giveth goodly words. Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. From the tribe of Judah, and I'm picking up at 49 and 22. Joseph is a fruitful bow, even a fruitful bow by a well, whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him, and shot at him, and hated him. But his bow abode his strength. And the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty power of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Even by the power of thy father who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breast and of the womb. The blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be upon the head of Joseph, and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf. In the morning he shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is that that their father spoke unto them, and blessed them. Everyone according to his blessings, he blessed them. 29 alas, and he charged them, and said unto them, I am to be gathered unto my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite. Come on. Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shabbat Shalom. My name is Brother Zachariah from the tribe of Levi, nation of Israel. Picking up in Genesis chapter 49, verse 30. In the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, 
which is before Mamre, in the land of Canaan, which Abraham brought with the field of Ephron, the Hittite, for, for possession of the burying place. There they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife. There they buried Isaac and Rebekah, his wife. And there I buried Leah. The purchase of the field and of the cave that is therein was from the children of Heth. And when Jacob had made an end of commanding, commanding his sons, he gathered up his feet into the bed and yielded up the ghost and was gathered unto his people. It's the book of Genesis chapter 15 verse 1. And Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him and kissed him. Verse 2. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. And the physicians embalmed Israel. Verse 3. And forty days were fulfilled for him. For so are fulfilled the days of those which are embalmed. And the Egyptians mourned for him three score and ten days. Verse 4 and last. And when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph spake unto the house of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found grace in your eyes, speak, I pray you, in the ears of Pharaoh, saying, Come on. Come on, come on. Come on. All right, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Praise to the Most High. I am by Shabbat Shalom. We're in the book of Genesis, chapter 50, and we're going to start at verse 5. My father made me swear, saying, Lo, I die in my grave, which I have digged for me in the land of Canaan. There shalt thou bury me. Now, therefore, let me go up, I pray thee, and bury my father, and I will come again. And Pharaoh said, Go up and bury thy father, according as he may be swear. Verse 7. And Joseph went up to bury his father, and, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt. And all the houses of Joseph and his brethren, and his father's houses only their little ones, and their flocks and their herds, they left in the land of Goshen. Verse 9, And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a great com very great company. And they came to the threshing floor of Atai, which is beyond Jordan. And there they mourned with a great and very sore lamentation. And he made a mourning for his father seven days. Verse 11 and last. And when the inhabitants of the land of the Canaanites saw the mourning of the floor of Atai, they said, This is a grievous mourning to the Egyptians, wherefore the name of it was called a Abel Mazarim, Mizraim, Slakia, which is beyond Jordan. Come on. Come on. Come on. Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. And Brother Casey picking up in Genesis chapter 50, verse 13. For his sons carried him into the land of Canaan, Canaan, and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah, which Abraham bought with the field for a possession of burying place of Ephron the Hittite before Man Mamre. And Joseph returned into Egypt, he and his brethren and all that went up with him to bury his father after he had buried his father. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph, with Joseph will preadventure hate us, will certainly record requit us all the evil which he did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin. For they did unto thee evil, and now we pray thee. Forgive the trespass of the servants of the God thy father. And Joseph wept, and they spake unto him, and his brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, 
we be thy servants. Verse 19 and last. And Joseph said unto him, Fear not, for I am in the place of the Most High. Amen. All right, all praise. Let's give the Most High a hand. For us to be here, to serve our King, and to go into His book and to understand His Word. So this evening, we're going to have our brother and also deacon. I mean. <laughs> our officer. <laughs> okay, our brother and officer, you know what I mean? A real brother that's special in all our hearts. And we give thanks for him, you know what I mean? He's he really be out there laboring for everybody, and uh, you know, we give all praises. Officer Hazak. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I'm sitting over here thinking, what did I do to deserve this kind of warm welcome? <laughs> but all praise to the Most High. How's everybody doing in here? Good. 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 Right? We know in seven days is what? Passover. Passover. Another seven days we're going to be in Passover, right? Uh -huh. Hence the title of tonight's lesson, Our Passover Deliverance. Right? Mm -hmm. Our Passover Deliverance. And this, this is right on time because, you know, we had, I felt like we had a theme for this month. With the you know with the with the way the Most High Spirit was bringing forth the lessons, right? Speaking about checking ourselves with the leaven, then we had Officer Zachariah with out with the spirit of lust, right? And it's gonna bring us right into you know our Passover deliverance. Why we even keep the Passover, right? A lot of us think that the Passover is gonna just be a good time, mm -hmm. but during this period, is that it should be a lot of reflecting happening. Right, a lot of reflecting and and basically understanding, you know, how important Christ's sacrifice was for each and every one of us in this world. Right? Just imagine if he didn't sacrifice himself for us. None of this would even we wouldn't even be doing none of this right now. We would not have no understanding of who we are. We would be continual slaves on this earth with no hope. Right? So we have to really understand that our deliverance in Christ began, okay, with, with, with what the Most High actually said in the garden. I didn't put this in the precepts, but it came to mind in, in Genesis 3, right? Let, let, let's go there real quick. Genesis 3. When the Most High declared something on the earth. Right? Um, Genesis 3 and take it at verse 15. Well, Matt, take it out. Start at verse 13. Okay. Hmm. The book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 13. Yeah. <laughs> and the Lord power, Ahia, said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So we all know the story of this. The fall of man. Right? Go ahead. Verse 14. And the most high power said, said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Mm -hmm. Upon thy belly shalt thou go. And thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. So now let's pay attention to verse 15. Right? Mm -hmm. 15. Right. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. You see that? So he said he'll put enmity between you or between Satan and the woman. And we know that that woman's seed will bring, will bring forth who? 
Christ, right? Go ahead. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. You see that? So basically, this was the intro to Christ coming in and bringing salvation for the people. With this statement right here. Right? I want to go into the book of Luke. I, and I originally wanted to start here to paint the picture. Christ was showing the people at this time that he was the he was the Messiah. It was him who was prophesied in the Old Testament to come and save the children of Israel. But one thing you're gonna realize is that the people didn't they didn't, didn't want to hear. A lot of people didn't want to see it for what it really was. Right? Let's go to Luke 4 and 16. I'm going to start there. The book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 16. Go ahead. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for it to read. Same thing that we do every Shabbat. We were keeping the same customs. So Christ did this as well. Right? Go ahead. 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Mm. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. So you see that? So Christ and, and all of our ancestors in the back, in, you know, in the New Testament, wasn't reading the New Testament. They were reading out of the prophets. So when Christ spoke and when Christ taught, he, he taught specifically from the Old Testament. Right? Go ahead. Verse 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And what he's actually reading, we can actually read this in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah the 61st chapter. So this scripture, this scripture in particular was talking about Christ when, when Isaiah said it. Read it from the top again. Go ahead. Uh, St. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Yeah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Uh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to do what? Because he has anointed me mm. to preach the gospel to the poor. Uh-huh. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Go ahead. To preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So Christ was actually showing the people this is what this is the reason why he actually came on earth. Right? But a lot of people couldn't grasp it. And a lot of people didn't even believe that he was the Messiah at that time. You're going to see. Watch. He continued reading. Verse 20. Yeah. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. Uh -huh. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. So everybody couldn't believe what he was saying. They was just all looking at him after this one particular statement. Because at that time, there were some people who, who questioned if he was the Messiah. And so there were some people at that time as well who doubted that he was also the Messiah. So when he made this profound statement, in the synagogue on the Sabbath day, where well, all of Jerusalem is there, you can imagine this, the death stares he was getting at this point in time. You're going to see, watch that. Verse 21. Yeah. And he began to say unto them, uh -huh. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So after he closed the book, he said, This day is the day where this scripture is fulfilled. Right? Go ahead. And he bear, and all bear him witness, uh -huh. and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. So, so they could they couldn't understand what he was talking about, right? Go ahead. And they said, "It's not this Joseph's son." So now some there was some in the crowd. I was like, "Isn't that Joseph's son? We know who he is. We, how was he quoting Isaiah and, 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 and referring that to himself?" Right. Go ahead. And he said unto them, "Ye will surely say unto me this proverb." Physician, heal thyself. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, in, in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. So this statement that Christ is making is so profound. Right? Because he's in his own country. And they hearing the works that he's doing in the Gentile lands. And they're going to ask him to do it in this land. But you're going to find something else. Go ahead. Verse 24. Yeah. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. No prophet is accepted in his own country. Continue. But I tell you a truth. Uh -huh. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Isaiah. Uh -huh. When the heaven was shut up three years and six months. Mm -hmm. When great famine was throughout all the land. 
Yeah. Continue? Yeah. 26. But unto none of them was Isaiah sent. Mm. Save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. So he's, he's trying to paint the picture for them to understand something. This, story, this particular story in, in the Old Testament when Elijah, right? When, when he prayed and it, it did not rain on, on the earth for about six years. And the only the only person that received comfort at that time was a Gentile from the from the land of Sidon. Go ahead. Verse 27. Look at the next verse. And many lepers were in Israel. See, many lepers were in Israel. And he's talking about a specific time. Go ahead. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elijah, of Elijah the prophet. Well, that's that's basically um um uh, Elisha. Elisha. Yeah. The prophet. 27 in the middle. Mm -hmm. And none of them was cleansed. None of them was cleansed, saving Naam the Syrian. Saving Naam the Syrian. And he's talking about people who were in Jerusalem. The, yeah, you know, the, at that time, predominantly it's only Israelites, is was in or the Hebrews were in Jerusalem. But he said that there was many lepers in, in Israel at that time. But the only person that was able to get healed was some, was a, someone of another nation, a Syrian. Mm. And then I was like, now nah, I gotta read this story. So, so I went back and I, I found the story. If you, if you guys are interested, it's in, in Second Kings. Matter of fact, let's go there real quick. Just to paint the picture, we're gonna come back here. Second Kings five and one. I just wanted to just get you a, a, a quick synopsis of of Naaman. Right? He was not an Israelite. Right? But Christ is showing that there was a, a specific reason why. Out of all the people in Israel, he was the only one who was able to get cleansed. A Gentile. Right? Read, read, read that, read that um, in first and second Kings. What I said, five and one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, read that. Second Kings chapter five, verse one. Yeah. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria. You see that? So clearly this is not an Israelite. It's a Gentile. Right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Was a great man. He was a great man. Go ahead. With his master. Mm -hmm. And honorable. And he was very honorable. This is, this, is, this is making mention of a Gentile. Go ahead. Because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. You see that? So the Most High was able to use this Syrian for whatever particular reason he wanted to. And the story goes, you go go back to the book of Luke. And the story goes that he was a leper. And the king sent him to Israel, right, to the prophet Elisha, Elisha to get cleansed. And the story goes that he, at first, like the story goes, Elisha told him, "All right, I want you to go to the to go to the river Jordan and dip yourself in it seven times, right?" But at first, he didn't understand why he was telling him to go all the way to Jerusalem to go into the river Jordan and dip himself. And then he and he was complaining. He's like, "Yo, over here in Syria, we got we got plenty of water. Why 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 can't I just dip myself in and be cleansed here? Why can't you do that? I believe." Then one of his servants was like, "Yo, it's best that you listen to the word of the Most High God." Then he actually went and followed the instructions of of Elisha the prophet and was cleansed. Right. So keep that in mind. Now go back to the book of Luke. And go and go back to um go back to verse 27, 4 and 27. Keep that in mind. So we see that he was cleansed. Right? Go ahead. St. Luke chapter 4, verse 27. Uh-huh. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet. So we see now we know the time period and we know what's going on. Right? Go ahead. And none of them was cleansed. And none of them was cleansed. None of the Israelites was able to be cleansed during the time when Elisha was prophet. But but then saving Naam the Syrian. See, but a Syrian was able was was able to receive mercy and cleanse and heal. Now continue reading. Now he's gonna break it down with his name. Go ahead. Verse twenty eight. And all day in the synagogue. When they heard these things, were filled with wrath. So now, when I, when I read this, I couldn't understand why they were so upset when he said that statement. Right? They were upset because Christ was saying, "Before any of you guys can understand what I'm talking about here, 
the most high will use the Gentiles before you. So I see he was he was beginning to break the picture like yo, that whole being born as an Israelite that don't matter no more. There's a new way. I'm here. You see, this that's the reason why he was saying these things. And that and that kind of jumped over some people's heads, right? Where you at? 29. Yeah. They were filled with wrath. They were filled with wrath. And rose up. And they rose up. And thrust him out of the sea. Mm-hmm. So, so that so so they so they, they changed them out of the synagogue of what he said, right? It's like it's like they was they, he was preferring the Gentiles over his own blood side, his own his own people. <laughs> right? Go ahead. And led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. So they were trying to toss him off a cliff for the, for the words that he said. It was that serious in Israel. You said anything disrespectful, you was getting. Right? Whether it was lashes, stone, what you name it. Put on fire. But so for that statement that Christ made, they was ready to take him out. Right? Go ahead. Verse 30. But he passing through the midst of them went his way. Mm-hmm. Verse 31. That, that's it on that. So now, Christ was showing something, and it was more so talking about obedience. Obedience to the word. Right? Because the scripture says what? Jacob seeketh after a sign, and the, and and what? The Greeks seeketh after wisdom. So it don't take nothing for 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 somebody outside of Israel to understand what we're reading in these scriptures. With our people, we need signs, we need wonders, and it's gonna go into and it's gonna go into later how I'm gonna explain how the Most High knew His people to sift now. Why he had to send Christ. Because we're so stiff neck to the point where a miracle could be happening in our face and we still won't, won't give the most highest credit. <laughs> now imagine Christ walking the scene, doing all these miracles and people still doubting him. Right? Look, he even said it again. Go to Matthew 8, 13. Look at this. And I'm bringing this out to say you're going to find out a lot of our people don't really take in, into consideration Christ's sacrifice. They don't really understand the importance of it. Right? But we're going to show you how important it is. Read, read that again. Read that in Matthew. It's eight. in 8 and 13, right? Uh, St. Matthew chapter 8, verse 13. Yeah. And Yeshua said unto the centurion, Go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. Go ahead. Wait, matter of fact. Jump up to verse 5. It's a lot here. Verse 5. Yeah. Chapter 8. And when Yeshia was entered into Capernaum, there came in unto him a centurion beseeching him. And this centurion now is not an Israelite. Because the, all of the centurions at that time were part of the of the Roman army. So now someone of another nation was beseeching Christ. Right? Because and the thing is that and that's the that's the thing that the most high and Christ is trying to point out to us. All the Gentiles gotta do is hear and they believe. Our people, we're gonna fight, we're gonna debate, and not even look at the, the real the real matter at hand. Right? You, 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 you tell somebody of another nation, you know, one plus one is two, like, all right, one plus one is two. You tell us one plus one is two, all right, but how did you add that up, though? <laughs> Every, our people always want to get to the, to, to, down to the science of everything. <laughs> this, is why, this is why Christ said, yo, unless you be like one of these little churches, you can't know why it's entering. Yeah. Don't question nothing. You see the scriptures, <laughs> and if something is too high for your understanding, there's brothers and sisters that can help you. There's elders, there's, 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 there's teachers. But I digress. Matthew 5 and 8, right? So read that again from the top. 8 and 5. Yeah, 8 and 5. And when Yeshua was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, mm-hmm. Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy. And you see how humble he came? He addressed him as Lord. He's called the master. Right? Go ahead. My servant, life at home, sick of the palsy, yeah. previously tormented. Uh huh. Verse seven, and Yeshua saith unto him, I will come and heal him. 
So Christ said, I have no problem. I'm going to come with you to go heal him. So now let's look at the faith of this centurion. Go ahead. Verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. Look at that. He said, I'm not worthy that you shouldn't even come to my roof. What he said? But speak the word only. Just speak the word only. I don't got to see nothing. You don't got to add nothing up. You don't got to tell me, show me the books you read to do this. Just speak the word only. This is what the centurion said to Christ. Go ahead. But speak the word only. Yeah. And my servant shall be healed. And my servant shall be healed. Go ahead. Verse 9. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go. Oh. And he goeth. You see that? So this, this, this wasn't some... Some poor man or some somebody of, of, of a low estate. This man had a position of power. He could have he could have just told his men, grab this guy named Christ right here and bring him to my so, so you can heal him, heal me. He's telling he's letting them know his position. Like, yo, I have all of this power. I tell one man, go, he listen. Right? Go ahead. Verse 9 in the middle. Yeah. Go and he goeth. Go and he goeth. And to another. And to another. Come. Come. And he cometh. Mm -hmm. And to my servant, do this. And he doeth it. Mm. Verse 10. When Yeshia heard it. So now look at what you, look, look at what Yeshia is gonna say. He's looking at this man like I, I can't believe I wish he's probably saying right now, I wish my people could talk like this. I wish my people could think the way he this man thinks. I wouldn't have to do all of this right now. Watch, look. He said he marveled that. Verse 10. When Yeshia heard it, he marveled. Uh, and said to them that follow, Verily I say unto you, mm -hmm. I have not found so great faith. Look at that. He said, I have not found no such great faith. Go ahead. No. No. Not in Israel. Not even in Israel. His own people. Go ahead. Verse 11. And I say unto you, That many shall come from the east and the west. Uh huh. And shall sit down with Abraham mm. and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out mm. into outer darkness. You see that? And what? Cast out into outer dark outer darkness. Finish it off. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So y'all yeah, gotta understand what Christ is saying right here. He said, Many shall come from the east and the west. He's not even including his own people. And he said, they will come and sit down with our fathers. But the children of the kingdom will be left out. Why? Their stiff-neckedness. Or if that's even a word. <laughs> right? Their, 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 their unbelief. I mean, this man put his life on a line. And he, and he, and he sacrificed himself. And the question I ask my people, I'm like, yo, what did he do that's so wrong that you don't want to believe in him? I don't believe in no Christ. He had that thing. He made up. Yeah? The signs point that Christ is a black man. What man you know will get beat for no reason? Accused and put to death. Don't that sound familiar? Don't that sound like what our brothers and sisters go through in this system right now? So Christ said, many of the other nations will come and sit down with, with our fathers, but the children of the kingdom will not. Right? Because the Most High knows how stiff necked we are. Even with an example of, with Christ, with his sacrifice, you would think our people would just be down for like, yo, this man died for me. I don't even know this brother. So I can have life. Our people still don't want to take heed. And this is why it's important for us, even if the people outside don't know this, we got to know it. We got to understand the importance of Christ's Passover for us. Because it's, 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 it's easy or it's, I mean, we can all in here know and understand um, when our forefathers left Egypt. We understood the importance of why. They were looking to kill the children of Israel in Egypt. They were looking to kill us, right? So the Most High made, sent, 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 um, you know, sent the plagues, sent Moses, let my people go, and we out of there, right? 
So we understand the importance of that because our lives are on the line. But do our people understand the importance of now? Our people think everything is in good case. Our lives are still on the line. Do you understand? Christ is coming to save us from those who, as a matter of fact, let's get that. Go to, go to Matthew 1 and 1. This is why it's so important to understand his path, that Christ's sacrifice. Christ's sacrifice is not to just say, okay, I'm saved now, I got the Holy Ghost, I got the Holy Spirit, and uh, I'm free. No. There's an agenda and there's a plan out there to eradicate a certain group of people on this earth. And without that same blood, the same blood that our brothers and sisters was putting on the doorposts in Egypt, Christ's blood signifies, represents that for today, for us. The same way how the death angel passed through Egypt and was taking out the Egyptians, but when he seen the blood, he passed through that house, Christ's blood allows us to be protected, and that death angel passes through our house. Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Come on. Get that, Matthew 1 and 21. You got your cell phone to try to vibrate. Please. Silence. Please. Yeah. St. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Yeah. And she shall bring forth a son. And we honest, we all know this. And thou shalt call his name Yeshia, or Savior, for he shall save his people from their sins. Go ahead. 22. So so you see that Christ's main mission was to was to be born and to save his people from their sins, huh? Uh, now go to Luke 1. And go to 68. St. Luke chapter 1. Yeah, 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Mm -hmm. Blessed be who? The Lord God Ahiah of Israel. Go ahead. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. He has visited and redeemed his people. This is what Christ was born for. This is what his sacrifice was for. To visit and redeem his people. Right? Go ahead. Verse 69. And hath raised up in horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Go ahead. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have have been since the world began. Mm -hmm. Verse 71. That we should be saved from our enemies. We should be what? That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies. So the same saving that was happening in Egypt during Passover. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please, if you can, just silence your every phone. If you can. The while. So... The same saving that was going on in Egypt with our people back then is the same saving that we need now. That same blood covers us. Has visited and redeemed his people that we should be saved from our enemies and from what? And from the hand of all that hate us. And from the hand of all that hate us. And this is what they was missing in the Christian church. They skipped this part. They, I don't even believe they understood this part. You don't, you're not just saved. You come up to the altar and you get prayed on and you're saved. No, what are we saved from? The scriptures is telling us Christ was saving us from those who hate us. This is why his, his sacrifice is way deeper than we probably could even, even imagine. Right? So now back to what we were talking about, how our people are sitting there. How the most high know we said that. Go to Deuteronomy 31. Deuteronomy 31 is like at verse 14. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach that thou must die. Call Joshua and present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation, that I may give him a charge. And Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. 
So this is this is the time period where Moses was passing the torch, right, to Joshua to continue to lead the people to salvation or to the promised land. Right? Go ahead. And the Most High appeared in the tabernacle in the pillar of a cloud, and the pillar of the cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up mm. and go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land. See what the Most High said? He said, he said, he said, he said you're going to go and sleep with your father. You're going to die. You're going to pass away. But as no, no, as soon as you leave, these people will go back to following strange gods. So Moses already knew. Right? Go ahead. Whither they go to be among them and will forsake me. Yeah. And will break my covenant which I have made with them. And will what? And will break my covenant which I have made with them. You see that? Go ahead. 17. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day. Mm. And I will forsake them. And I will hide my face from them. And they shall be devoured. And many evils and troubles shall befall them. You see that? Many evils and troubles shall, shall befall them. So the question is, when all this starts happening, who is supposed to take us out of this? Who is supposed to save us out of this, right? Continue reading. So, so, that they, so that they will say in that day, are not these evils come upon us because our God is not among us? Verse 18. And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they, which they shall have brought. Go ahead. In that they are turned unto other gods. Verse 19. Now therefore write ye this song for you and teach it the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. Mm. Verse 20. For when, for when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers that flow with the milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and wax and fat, then they will turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me and break my covenant. So you see that? The Most High knew we said that. The Most High is breaking everything down to Moses. Right? This is why when you read early in Deuteronomy 18, the Most High has told Moses of the one to come, that prophet to come. One to one just like you unto your brethren, and unto him they shall hear. So the Most High was just setting it up, mm. just watching us the whole time. Continue reading. Deuteronomy 31, verse 21. Yeah. And it shall come to pass, when many evils and troubles are befalling them, mm. that this song shall testify against them as a witness. You see that? When many troubles and evils shall come, this song will be a testimony unto them. Like, yo, look, I, I warned you guys. Go ahead. For it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. Mm -hmm. For I know their imagination which they go about. Mm -hmm. See that? Most I knew. Go ahead. Even now, before I have brought them into the land which I swear. Yeah. Moses, therefore, wrote this song the same day and taught it the children of Israel. 23. And he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge and said, Be strong and of good courage, for thou, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. Verse 24. And it came to pass, when Moses had made an end of the writing of the words of this law in a book until they were finished, 25. That Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Most High. Go ahead. That it may be there for a witness against thee. 27. For I know thy rebellion and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord. And how much more after my death? So that was the question he was asking. He said that even, even when I, while I'm here, you guys have been rebellious and stiff necked. How much more rebellion will you guys continue to do? Right? They rebelled all the way until those slave ships came. Now we're here. Continue. Continue. <laughs> yeah. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers that I may speak these words in their ears 
and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death, ye will utterly corrupt yourselves. You see that? Hmm. So it was written already. The Most High told Moses that we would utterly corrupt ourselves. This is the reason why Christ had to come. There was no other way back to the Father. No sacrifice, no raising of hands, no incense burning, none, none of that. Okay, this, this is this is the new way. So we have to we have to understand this this time period that we're going into. Finish it off. You will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days, because ye will do evil in the sight of the Most High to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. See that evil shall befall you in the latter days. So the Most High was warning them, like, yo, it may not reach you, but your children will be affected. So we could clearly see that our forefathers they didn't have this in mind. They didn't care about what they were doing when they were doing what they were doing. Not understanding that their generations will, will, will continue. Right? And there's a deeper story of this, the same conversation in the book of Jubilees. Matter of fact, let's go here. Jubilees 1, 1 and 1. When the Most High goes in debt with Moses. Showing the rebellion of the people. Showing how stiff-necked we were. Or we are. Right? This is why we, we like I said, is is this, yes, we you know, Passover is gonna be a great time, we're gonna have festive, we're gonna have a, a festive time, but it's not it's not just about having fun. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just about the music that's gonna be playing and you know the food that we're gonna eat. We're, of course, we're gonna have a great time. But we gotta understand the price that was paid for us to even be able to still continue to do this for our generations, huh? Come on, we have to understand that. We gotta understand what we're getting into. The Mosai is trying to paint the picture. <clears throat> right? Go ahead. The book of Jubilees, chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Come up to me on the mount, and I will give thee two tables of stone of the law, and of the commandment which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. Keep reading, right? Keep reading all the way down. All right, yeah. Uh, verse 2. And Moses went up into the mount of the Most High, and the glory of the Lord abode on Mount Sinai, mm -hmm. and a cloud overshadowed it six days. And he called the Moses, and he called Moses on the seventh day out of the midst of the cloud. And the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a flaming fire on the top of the mount. Mm -hmm. And Moses was on the mount forty days and forty nights. And the Most High taught him the earlier and the latter history of the division of all the days of the law and of the testimony. So the Most High showed Moses everything from the beginning of time to the end of time. So sure enough, Moses seen us in our captivity. All the prophets seen us in our captivity. And they, they, they like Ezekiel, we could, we, could, we could run down the list. Ezekiel seen it, the Valley of Dry Bones. Isaiah seen it, he seen, he seen princes walking and servants walking on horses. Over and over and over again, the most I was showing the prophets what were before the people. So, so that's that's showing me that if the prophets wasn't enough back then, that's what showed me why Christ had to come. He's the end all be all to all of this. Because after this, that's, that's not, what's what's left? What are you gonna say? You had the choice. You had the chance. This is why Christ was saying, like, yo. The, the other nations will, 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 will sit with our forefathers before y'all believe. Go ahead. Verse 5. Yeah. And he said, Incline thine heart to every word which I shall speak mm -hmm. to thee on this mount, and write them in a book in order that their generations may see how I have not forsaken them for all the evil which they have wrought in transgressing the covenant. You, you see that? The Most High said that he want to, he wanted Moses to write this down so we could read this so that we can know that the Most High never forsake us, even though we broke our side of the contract. That's something that y'all have to think about. And this brings me back to a conversation that uh, we was having with um with your friends and by the brother house. 
where somebody asked a question. Somebody asked a question to me was like, I don't understand. You want me to believe that 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 you hate you 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 hate your son that much, right? You you could you, oh no, he said your son or your daughter could do something that's so bad that it will prevent you from wanting to see them ever, 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 ever again. So he was relating that to the judgment. How how the most high calls us his children and we could we could mess up to the point where he'll cast us in the lake of fire. But what he failed to realize is all the chances the Most High put before us. The Most High didn't just say, okay, don't do this, and you do it one time and you're gone. No. The Most High gave us chances. Christ is the last chance. So if he's going to show you all the chances he gave you, then up until the time when you rejected Christ, then what are you going to have to say? Do you deserve eternal salvation? Even though you, you lived your life as, as, as a sinner, you deserve salvation. You deserve to, to be in the presence of the Most High. And that's what people don't think about. Like we could be, like the thing is with, with, with people is we could be hard on each other, but the Most High can't be hard on us. <laughs> like like we, 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 could, we could correct our children, we could, we could um, put them in punishment, but the Most High can't punish us because he's God. He's supposed to be all loving and floating on the cloud somewhere and handing out flies. <laughs> that, that's the God that, they, that, they, that, they, that they've been given through, through media. It's not the God of the Bible. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, when, when, when you come across these people, man, you just gotta shake the, dust off, dust, shake the dust off your feet. But if you have the patience to try to break it down, then break it down. More power to you. But, continue reading. The book of Jubilees, chapter yeah. 1 and 5. Incline thine heart to every word which I shall speak unto thee. See? On this mount. Uh -huh. And write them in a book. In order that their generations may see how I have not forsaken them. You see that? We're supposed to be reading this so we could see the chances that the Most High gave us. That's the chances the Most High gave us. So that the generations can see that He never gave up on us. We gave up on Him. Uh -huh. So when people be saying stuff like that, I, I ignore them. I tune them out because you, you don't know. The scripture says, if this gospel has been hit, it's hit to them who been it's hit to them who are lost. That the God of this world has covered their eyes. They're not following the God of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're following the God of this world. Money, chasing cars, women, all this stuff. So you can't see what the chance of the Most High is giving you because you're blinded. You're blinded by the lust of this life. So I, I don't care what anybody tell me, you're not gonna blind me too. <laughs> I, can see, I can see. So if you blind, you you blind. Christ said, if the blind lead the blind to blind, they both shall what? Fall into a dish. You're not getting me. I'm leading you and you trying to be falling in a dish with you. Nah, you by yourself. You, I'm watching you fall too. Like, oh you alright? <laughs> I'll throw some water down there and give you a blanket, but I ain't going down there. <laughs> blind leading the blind. But yeah, go ahead. The most high is merciful. Go ahead. I have not forsaken them. I have not forsaken them. For so, all the evil. For all for what? For all the evil. For all the evil. So we have no excuse when we stand before the most high. Go ahead. Which they have wrought in transgressing the covenant which I established between me and me. For their generations this day on Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. So six. So that was a, as a, as a testimony from that point in time all the way to now. Go ahead. Verse six. And thus it will come to pass when all these things come upon them. You see? see? He's saying it again. Same thing we just read in the book of Deuteronomy. Go ahead. That they will recognize that I am more righteous than they are. Than they. You see that? And all of us in this room realize that we was jacked up. And the Most High was perfect the whole time. That's why we're here. We read the prophecies. He, he left the testimonies. He showed us that we were going to slavery. And now we understand and we and we like, yo, you know what? Dang, I wish I had the Most High since I, I wish I knew this information a long time ago. The Most High is true. The words is true. So we got to take everything into consideration. Right? Go ahead. That they will recognize mm, that they will recognize that, that I am more righteous than they mm, 
and all their judgment. And all their judgment, because why? We lean to our own understanding to judge. Mm-hmm. That, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. We could judge each other, we could punish our children and correct our children, but the Most High God can't correct us. The Most High is, is, is the Most High. His judgment is righteous. Go ahead. And, and in all their actions, mm-hmm. and they will recognize that I have been truly with them. Mm-hmm. Verse 7. And do thou write for thyself all these words which and, I declare unto thee. And it's evident that we know that the Most High was always with us. What people on this earth you know can go through what we went through and still be loving and kind and, and still dancing and shucking and jiving for the, for the other nations? What other people? Yo, let one point on the stock market go down. Edom is jumping out the window head first. <laughs> <laughs> Today at 10, a billionaire loses his life. <laughs> they can't, like, you understand what I'm saying? It takes a special kind of people to go through what we went through. And the only reason why we was able to go through because the Most High said he was with us the whole time. I remember Elder Ricard touched on this too, and we were talking about this, or, um, I think it was last week. We were talking about it, how we always thought different in this world. We always, we, there was something like the Most High was breaking our program from young. We always was different. I can tell y'all stories of, of things that, that was going on in my childhood, and people were like, yo, why, why, do you, why do you think like that? Why, why are you looking at it like that way? Or why are you doing this for? Mm. You understand? The Most High was always with us. No one could take the Most High's children out of his hand. That's what he said. Uh, uh. We got to believe that. We got to understand that. Go ahead. And do thou write for thyself all these words which I declare unto thee this day. Mm-hmm. For I know their rebellion. I know their rebellion. You see that? I'm still going to be with them, but I know they're rebellion. So the Most High is watching us do all of our filth. And it's like, you know what? We just give them some time. And this is why you know, I always laugh when Elder Ricard says, man, the nations are shaking in their boots right now <laughs> when they see us waking up. Because we're not supposed to know this. We're not, we're not, we're not supposed to know this. How are we supposed to know this? How? How? <laughs> How we supposed to know this? I, I, I don't. I, it always it always boggles my mind when I when we read the scriptures and everything makes sense. We're not supposed to know this, and they look at us like, "Oh, how do these people know? We gave them the worst education, we gave them the worst health care, but yet they multiplying more and more and more, and they still dancing, creating new dances, doing new stuff." And we over here watching them and copying them still. If that's not the most, I don't know what it is. Go ahead. For I know their rebellion and their stiff neck. Mm. See that word again? They're, they're stiff neck. Mm. And 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 Elder Gabon touched on this too. He said that he said that the most high made a stiff neck though. It's good and bad. We either could be stiff neck for the most high, like no one's moving us, like this is the laws, we follow the laws, or we could be stiff neck in the world. Paganism. You're not moving a Catholic from counting the beads. They're gonna count every single bead before they leave the house. And like, yo, you know you can't read, you can't be doing that. It's not in the Bible. What you mean? Santa Maria? Like, what? But go ahead. <laughs> Whatever they be saying, you know. I'll get into none of that. But go ahead. Before I bring them into the land of which I swear to their fathers. Yeah. To Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob, saying. Unto your seed will I give a land flowing with milk and honey. You see that? That's the promise. This is the reason why the Most High had to be with us this whole time. Who are you going to give the promise to? Japheth? <laughs> Ham? <laughs> the Most High made a promise that he has to keep. Right. The book of Malachi 3 6 says, What? I am the Most High. I change not. not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. You guys have to understand this. Go ahead. Verse 8. And they will eat and be satisfied. Mm. And don't we eat? Go ahead. And they will turn to strange gods. And you see, even through all of that, we still was we still was gonna turn to strange gods. Right? Go ahead. What verse you at? Uh the middle of verse 8. Alright. To gods which cannot deliver them from Ought of their tri- of their tribulation. Go ahead. And this witness shall be heard for a witness against them. You see that? Say it again. 
When we hear this, we'll understand that we was always wrong. It wasn't the most high. It was us. Go ahead. Verse 9. Yeah. But they will forget all my commandments. They will forget all my commandments. You see? This is why, this is why when we came into truth, you know, the first, I'll say, I'll say for, for those who got some time in, in this truth, I would say like the first year, two years, it's like trying to get the law down straight and being militant. <laughs> because we forgot them. So it's like, yo, okay, we, this is why we fell? All right, I'm going to do everything possible straight. I'm going to do everything. Because we forgot them. Right? Go ahead. Even all that I commanded them, mm -hmm. and they will walk after the Gentiles. You see that? Hmm. Then he said that we would, in our captivities, we will begin to walk after the Gentiles. So now we understand why it's hard for our people to understand that we are not African and American. We not all these different names. We was never supposed to integrate. Separate but equal is equal. I believe that. I don't, we don't got to integrate with none of these people. The Most High gave us our, 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 our rules. Our, you, know what I'm, you understand what I'm saying? Go ahead. And we'll walk after the Gentiles and after their uncleanness. Mm. After their uncleanness. So a lot of the things we picked up and we magnify. Just look at our people when, when, when our people fall into certain type of sins and a certain type of lust. They do it to the point where it's like, yo, okay, somebody got to stop this person now. You know what I'm saying? You see, you see. See a, you see a sodomite walking down the street and it's, and it's, it's <laughs> see, you see one of our brothers sodomite walking down the street, they walking better than any sister in this room. <laughs> and I'm just looking at them like, yo, come on, brother, like, yo. Everybody got it. Yeah. They gotta they gotta let it be known that they they in the room. Wearing the brightest colors, the speaking the loudest. Our people is something else, man. <laughs> He said, he said we will walk after their uncleanness. Go ahead. And after their shame. After their shame. And will serve their God. Mm, go ahead. And these will prove unto them an offense and a tribulation and an affliction and a snare. Verse 10. And many will perish and they will be taken captive and will fall into the hands of the enemy. You see that? So the Most High told Moses all of that. Right? The Most High said... Through all of this, this is what your people gonna go through. Because why? They're what? Stick man. They're rebellious. So now, okay, we, we could drop that. Right? So the most high is showing. I, I, I'm, I think this is to paint a picture. Right? The most high is showing that we rebellious, stiff neck, children that don't listen. We went a whoring after other gods. We doing what we want to do. Now Let's read, let's read a prophecy concerning our Lord and our Savior. Let's see if he deserved any of this. Go to Isaiah 53. And, keep, uh, and while we're reading this, keep in mind how stiff-necked we are. All the chances that we got. And that goes to show you how much the Most High loves his people. But with that same love, he will judge you as well. Okay, don't think, it, okay, he loves me, I can do whatever I want now and I'm good. No. You have the opportunity to change because Christ's sacrifice married us back to the Father. But if you dare, okay, take his, take his sacrifice or not, may the Most High be with you in this life and in the life to come. Go ahead. The book of uh, verse one. Yes, I have verse one. The book of Isaiah, chapter fifty-three, verse one. Yeah. Who hath believed our report? And look, Isaiah started like that. Who hath believed our report? Because all throughout the old scriptures, we talk about this one man. He's the prophet that's going to come to you. So when he comes, are you going to believe it's him? Right. Go ahead. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Go ahead. Verse two. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, mm -hmm. and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form, nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. You see that? So Christ wasn't like the most popular person. 
when he was born. He wasn't the most handsome. Okay? He was just like a pacifier. Someone you see in the street, like, oh, look at this guy. He's just walking past him. Said he, they said he had no comeliness that we shall desire him. So that's why you can imagine every time he spoke, and he spoke with such authority, everybody's looking at him like, Yo, who is this guy? Is this the son of Joseph? What? Making sense now, right? Go ahead. Verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men. Mm. A man of sorrows. He's a man of sorrows. Mm. And acquainted with grief. And acquainted with grief. Go ahead. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Mm. You see that? Through all disobedience. Not wanting to take heed, not wanting to listen, not wanting to follow him. Right? Go ahead. He was despised. Mm. And we esteemed him not. You see that? He was despised, but we esteemed him not. We didn't take into consideration the sacrifice that he made for us. Right? Go ahead. Verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs. You see, surely he hath borne our griefs. Everything that we were supposed to receive was laid on him. Now that, that, that goes to show you how the Most High loves his people. For, the, for, for Ahiah loved the world of Israel that he gave his only begotten son. Don't let that slip your mind. For you, he gave the first begotten. Go ahead. Verse 4. Surely he had borne our griefs and uh -huh. carried our sorrows. And carried our sorrows. He, everything was laid upon him. Go ahead. Yet we did esteem him stricken, mm. smitten of the Most High, afflicted. Mm. Verse five. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was what? He was wounded for our transgression. He was wounded for our transgression. He didn't do nothing wrong, but he had to hope to take the brunt of of the, of the beating for Yasharala's sake, for Israel's sake, right? And for those who will come in, Jew and Gentile, he did that for those people, for everybody to find rest. Go ahead. He was bruised. He was bruised for our iniquities. Mm -hmm. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. So the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Every time he was chastised, peace was being added unto us. That's how you have to look at it when, it when it comes to Christ's sacrifice. Every time they spat on him, right? They whipped him, mocked him. That was for us. That was for you. Okay? Go ahead. And with his stripes, we are healed. With his stripes, we are healed. Right? Go ahead. Verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. Mm. We have turned everyone to his own way. Mm. And the Most High has laid on him the iniquity of us all. You see that? The Most High put all of our iniquities on him. Mm. Go ahead. Verse 7. Mm. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yeah. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened his not his mouth. And he took it all without even opening his mouth. They didn't talk back. He took it all because he understood why. He understood my people need this. The promise got to be given. <clears throat> right? Go ahead. Verse 8. He was taken from prison mm. and from judgment. You see that? And this is all. We, and we're going to read this next. We're going to read this part next. He was taken from prison to judgment. The soldiers took him, then now he's standing in front of Pilate. This talk, this, this is Christ. Go ahead. And who shall declare his generation? Mm. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Do you see that? For the transgression of my people was he stricken. That was the, that's the reason why Christ was here. This is why we have to really understand how important this Passover is. It's not just we just coming together and having fun. Understanding that, you know, someone 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 life had to be on the line. Someone lost their life for our salvation. 
Right? Verse 9. Yeah. And he made his grave with the wicked mm. and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence. See? Go ahead. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. Verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. You see that? It pleased. Some people might read this like, how are you going to please the Lord? It said it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Because remember earlier it said what? With every stripe, the nation of Israel was being healed. That's why it pleased. He didn't want to do it, but the most high, it pleased the most because, well, because why? He's going to redeem his people. Through that. Right? Go ahead. Isaiah 53, verse 10. Yeah. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Mm. Go ahead. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Most High shall prosper in his hand. Verse 11. He shall see of the travail of his soul. And shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall be, shall, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. Mm. You see that? So he was put in place to teach us all. In, in John, I believe John 15, where it says that he's the door. He's the, he's, the, he's the door of the sheep. Right? Go ahead. Verse 11 in the middle. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, mm -hmm. for he shall bear their iniquities. Go ahead. Verse 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, mm. because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And that's talking about his kingdom. He shall devour what he inherits with us. That's his reward for going through that. And us accepting him will we'll be able to partake in his glory in his glory. Right? Go ahead. And he was numbered with the transgressors. Mm -hmm. And he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Uh, so you see that? So now, reflect on yourself. Right? Did you deserve any of that? As stiff-necked and rebellious and disobedient as we are, he died even for the sinner too. He died for them too. For them, for them to even have a chance to even repent. No, like, imagine... You gotta do you gotta you gotta you gotta complete a task knowing that you're gonna die and the task ain't even gonna work fully. You're gonna die for people and understand that they still gonna be disobedient. Even the way that you die was a great thing for the soul. Right. So matter of fact, let's go there. Mark 15, the one. We're almost done. And I, I figured, you know, you know, since Passover, this next week, we might as well read the crucifixion. Let's read it. Mm -hmm. Right? Want to get a box of tissues? Huh? Want get some tissue? <laughs> get some tissue off? Get yeah, tissue it, 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 up? this is a hard read, man, but <laughs> let's gird up our loins. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Mark 15 and 1. The book of St. Mark, chapter 15, verse 1. And straightway in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council and bound Yeshua and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. Mm. See, we just read that in, in, in um, Isaiah. All right, go ahead. Verse 2. And Pilate asked him, Are thou the king of the Jews? And he answered, and, and he answering said unto him, Thou sayest, you see that? Same thing we read in Isaiah 53. He's, he's doing it. It's going, he's going to. Right? Go ahead. Look at verse 3. Verse 3. The chief priests accused him of many things. You see, and, that's our, and, the, and those, those are our people. They were accusing him. Go ahead. But he answered nothing. <laughs> he said nothing. Like a sheep, he opened up not his mouth. He had to fulfill all things. That prophecy was written about him, so he had to fulfill that part too. Go ahead. Verse 4. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Mm. 
Behold how many things they wit behold how many things they witness against thee. But Yeshua yet answered nothing. So that Pilate marveled. Go ahead. Verse 6. Now at that feast he was released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. Verse 7. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made inter insurrection with him, mm. who had committed murder in the insurrection. You look at that. So during the during this time of the year, they would release one prisoner. And one that was a prisoner there was the worst person you could have, you could imagine all of Israel. The most craziest, brutal gangbanger. Just imagine of our time standing next to Christ. Right? Go ahead. Verse 8. And the multitude, crying aloud, began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. Go ahead. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? You see that? So he said, Should I release the king of the Jews? Talk about Yeshua. Yeah. Go ahead. Verse 10. For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. You see that? So Pilate knew that Christ ain't do nothing. But they but he knew that they was just delivering Christ up because they was envious of him. He was being slain for no reason. Go ahead. Verse 11. Yeah. But the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. You see that? So the chief priest stood up and started to convince the people, like, yo, nah, let's get this murderer instead. They rather release the murderer, rapist, all right? Who knows what, other, what else titles he had, rather than release Christ, who did nothing. You see that? Go ahead. Verse 12. And Pilate answered and said unto them, and said again unto them, What will ye then shall I say un what what will ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? Now let's see. He said, well, so what should I do with this one then? I'm gonna release the murderer, right? What do you want me to do with, with, with him? Go ahead. 13. And they cried out again, crucify him. Crucify him. <laughs> Wicked. The most I knew, the most I knew would be rebellious. Crucify him. This is what they said. Go ahead. 14. Then Pilate said unto them, Why? What evil have he done? Go ahead. And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. Mm. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Yeshua. When he had scourged him to be crucified. After they beat him, they delivered him up to be crucified. And like we read in Isaiah 52, this was all done for our saving, for our salvation, our peace. So when you read this, you got to read this with a different type of mindset now. You got to read this with a different eye now. Right? Go ahead. Verse 16. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium. And they called together the whole band. Verse 17, and they clothed him with purple and planted a crown of thorns and put it about his head. You see that they mocking him because we know purple is a royal color. So he's, you you, you want to be the king, right? Here you go. Throw purple. Throw, probably found some, some purple sheet somewhere and just threw it on him and put a thorn of crowns on, him, on his head. Right? Go ahead. Verse 18, and they began to salute him. Hail, king of the Jews. Laughing and saluting him. Right? Go ahead. And they smote him on the head with a reed, mm. and did spit upon him, and bound their knees, worshipped him. See that? That's what the Romans was doing to our Lord and our Savior. But he took all of that for you, for us. Right? Go ahead. Verse 20. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him, and put his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. And they compel, and they compel one Simon, a Syrian, who passed by. Coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus to bear his cross. Mm -hmm. Verse 22. And they bring him into, and they bring him unto the place of Galgotha, which is being interpreted the place of a skull. So he was so beat up and, and battered, he couldn't even carry the cross. He had to get somebody else to help him. That's how you can imagine. You're probably hanging on to life. Right? Go ahead. 23. 
and they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh. Mm. But he received it not. Go ahead. 24. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. Fill the scripture, go ahead. 25. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. Mm -hmm. So it was the third hour when they crucified him. What hour was that? Brothers in the room who, who know the time. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Go ahead. Verse 26. And the superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. Mm -hmm. Verse 28. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. Where, 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 do, you, where do you find a precept for that? Isaiah 53. Just read it. He was numbered amongst the transgressors. Everything was being fulfilled, right? Go ahead. Verse 29. Yeah. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads, and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple, and buildest it in three days. Go ahead. Verse 30. Save thyself. See that? While he's on the cross hanging, about to lose his life. They're saying, save thyself. You save others, right? Save yourself. Go ahead. Save thyself and come down from the cross. Mm. Likewise, also the chief priests, mocking and saying among themselves with the scribes, he saved others, himself he cannot save. Verse 32. Cool. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. You see that? And if this is not a story of a black man, I don't know what is. This is like a, this is a lynching going on right now. You understand? This is this is really, you know, you understand what what our people was going through here. You know, after them slave ships. Same thing. Go ahead. Thirty-three. And when the sixth hour was come, there was a darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. So what what, what time what time are we at now? Twelve. Go ahead. Ninth hour three. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Verse thirty-four. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. Verse thirty-four. And at the ninth hour, Yeshua cried with a loud voice, saying, "Ilo, ilo ah, ilo ah, lama sabaka dani," which is being interpreted, "My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me?" Mm. So, so at the end of the day, you can still see that Christ was still a man. So you could uh, you could imagine all the emotions that was going through his mind, right? Because he, like he, even though he he came, he came from the heavens, but he still was subjected to his flesh, right? Go ahead. And some of them that stood by, when they heard it, said, "Behold, he calleth Isaiah." Mm. And one ran. And filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let alone, let us see whether Isaiah will come to take him down. Mm -hmm. 37. And Yeshua cried with a loud voice and gave up the, the spirit. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. See that? Breaking the, breaking down the priesthood. No more priesthood. Because he accomplished his mission. Right? Go ahead. Verse 39, and when the centurion, which stood over against him, saw that, saw that he so cried out and gave up the Holy Spirit, he said, truly, this man was the son of the Most High. So, so look, out of all our people who, who believe, Gentile, the, centurion, Gentile. the centurion, a Roman, look, still being fulfilled after his death. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 40, yeah. There were also women looking on afar off. Among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James, the less, and of Joseph and Salome. Verse 41. Who also, when he was in Galilee, followed it and ministered unto him. You see that? Go ahead. And many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. So that was a crucifixion. This is what our Savior went through. Right? On Passover. 
This is what we gotta understand. This is this this was done to to our Savior for our, for our salvation. So we gotta constantly always remind ourselves that we were bought with a price that none of us in here can repay. None of us, right? Go to Jeremiah 46. I want to bring this out. 46 and 27 to 28. So Christ's crucifixion is something that we can know we can never repay. The only service we can do is what? Be his servant. And raise up the tribes of Jacob. Come. Come. Preach this truth to Jew and Gentile alike and wait for this kingdom. Wait, wait, what are you going to give the most high? Money? <laughs> Can't give the most high nothing. Right? Say Jeremiah 46. 46, yeah. So I take it out of verse 27. The book of Jeremiah chapter 46, verse 27. But fear not thou, O my servant Jacob, and be not dismayed, O Israel, for behold, I will save thee from afar off, mm -hmm. and thy seed from the land of their captivity. Yeah. And Jacob shall return, and be at rest, and at ease, and none shall make him afraid. Go ahead. 28. Fear thou not, O Jacob, my servant, saith the Most High, for I am with thee, for I will make a full end of all the nations that I have driven thee. But I will not make a full end of thee, but correct thee in measure. Yet will I not leave thee wholly unpunished. So, so you see that the Most High said, even though he'll make a full end of all the other nations, he will not cut us off, but he will save us from afar but and correct us in measure. So every time we, 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 we get ready to go into these, these holy days, we got to understand that we got to reflect on our past life and how much, you know, mercy the most I have us to this day. Still, right? Go to Hebrews 9. We're going to wrap it up pretty soon. Y'all hot, right? Uh, you know? I see people fanning themselves. Yeah, I'm like, man, it must be summertime. <laughs> now, go ahead. Um, yeah, come. Hebrews 9 and 11. Right? Understanding that his blood is our salvation. His sacrifice was our salvation. His Passover sacrifice was for us. Right? He came to fulfill all things. Read it. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 11. But Christ being come in high priest of good things to come, mm. by a greater and more and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Go ahead. Verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered at once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. You see that? So... Those, those sacrifices we used to do from year to year didn't mean anything no more compared to Christ's sacrifice because with his blood, he was able to enter into the holy place for us with it as a priest. How the priest did it every year, right? This is what Christ was able to do. Go ahead. 13. For of the blood of bulls mm. and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot mm. to the most high? You see that? If we was if we was found worthy through the blood of calves and goats, how much more worthy what do you think Christ's blood is doing for us now? Making all things new. Right? That's why when it's real, that's why when you go into that water, you gotta understand that's a new, that's a fresh start. You can only get that first start if you accept. What Christ is sacrifice. And if you don't believe in Christ's sacrifice, this, this don't pertain to you. Right? Go ahead. Purge your conscience from mm -hmm. dead works. Purge your what? Purge your conscience from dead works. Go ahead. To serve the living power. Mm -hmm. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. You see, he has become the way. 
his blood, his sacrifice. He's now the mediator of the New Testament, the new covenant, covenants, the new agreement. So you can't enter into agreement with the Most High through the old covenant. That's done. It's now this new way now. And if you don't accept it, that's on you. But you can't be under that covenant if you don't go through it. Go ahead. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, mm. they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. You see that? All the sin that was that was being done under the old testament, Christ's blood covered that. So that way we can still inherit. What was promised to us, confirming what we just read in the book of Jubilees. You see that? Go ahead. Verse 16. For where a testament is, mm. there must also of necessity be the death of the testament. You see that? Wherever there's an agreement, there gotta be the blood gotta be a part of that agreement. So for this new agreement, where is your new covenant? Where's the testator? Right, where's your sacrifice? Go ahead. Verse 17. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people. So that's what he used to do. He used to sprinkle it on everybody to show that that was the agreement. That was a similitude of things to come under Christ. Right? Go ahead. Verse 20. Saying, this is the blood of the testament which the Most High hath enjoined unto you. Mm -hmm. Moreover, he sprinkled with, with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. You see that? So if you're under the law, everything that you do has to be purged through blood. Right? And Christ said what? Think not that I've come to, to what? To show the law or the prophets. That hence his blood to confirm the law that we could that we continue to keep. Huh? Uh -huh. Go ahead. Verse 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood is no remission. Is what? Is no remission. Without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Point blank period. Okay? So anybody who's telling you they, 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 they tore followers strictly, may the Most High be with them in this life and in the life to come. Hmm. Where is your sacrifice? If you are tore a follower, you have to understand that you can only make a covenant with the with the Most High through blood. So what's the what's your sacrifice? And that's that's the error of our people. Go ahead, verse twenty three. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, mm. but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Mm. For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands. Mm. Which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of the Most High for us. So the same way our high priest used to go into the into the tabernacle and sacrifice when we transgress for the Most High for us and pour the blood on the altar, that's no longer being done. Christ did away with that. He took His blood and went into the eternal heavens and poured it once, and that was it for all. And that blood is still there. That's something. So not so no longer year to year we gotta keep going in there and and and, and, and sacrificing and asking the most high forgiveness for, for, for sinning and, and sacrificing and killing animals. Christ did that already. That's what his blood represents, right? Go ahead. Verse 25. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year. You see that? Mm -hmm. With blood of others. Verse 26. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. You see that? If that was the case, if he had to, if we had to, if we were still under that covenant, he would have to sacrifice himself once a year for us, being that lamb. And that's that's how you could see how vain our traditions became. 
It's just we're just doing it just to do it, just to get it over with, with no meaning. Now our sacrifice has a meaning because he had to die. And we can read about what he went through to have a conscience behind it. Sure. Go ahead. Verse 26 in the middle. Yeah. But now once in the but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Come on, go ahead. And as it is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. Come on. Smashing the whole reincarnation doctrine. Once to die, then the judgment. According to Christ, go ahead. 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Mm. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. You see that? He offered himself for the salvation of many. And when he returns, he's going to find us without spot or blemish, huh? Uh -huh. Go, to, go to chapter 10. We got two more scriptures and that's it. <clears throat> Start at verse 26. Right? Something that, like, if this is like a continuation of what we just read about the sacrifice. We got to understand this. Hebrews 10 and 26. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Yeah. For if we sin willfully, mm. after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. You see that? Mm. There's no more sacrifice for sin. Because you, you have the knowledge of sin already. You going to put Christ on the cross again? Go ahead. 27. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, mm -hmm. which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy. So he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna break he's gonna break it down and make you understand the importance of this this one sacrifice. He said that he that he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses, right? Go ahead. Twenty nine. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy mm. who have trodden under foot the Son of the Most High? You see that? Go ahead. And hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing, and have done despite unto the spirit of grace. So you see that? He said that back then, under Moses' law, you died with no chances. So now, what you think is going to happen to you for despising the blood of Christ? After reading what we just read, what he went through for us, and despising the blood of his covenant, I'm like, yo, 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 I'll, mean I'll make it up. We got to keep these things in mind, brothers and sisters. We got to understand this. Right? Go ahead. Verse 30. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. Mm. I will recompense, saith the Most High. And he will. Go ahead. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Mm -hmm. 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It said it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Where are you going to run to when it's just you before him and the angel staring at you? Where are you going to go? Where are you going to call? You going to call mommy? No good. Right? Can't call nobody. You can't call your pastor, your elder, or nothing. It's just you and all your works. So you, we got to be mindful. I'm, I'm not saying that everybody in here is sin free, but the the, the 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 purpose is to strive for perfection. We can be perfect if you keep if you follow what the Most High say. Matthew 26 and 26. When I end it there. So next week during communion night, we gotta we gotta keep in we gotta keep this in mind right here. The purpose of this, right? As a matter of fact, take it at 17. I was just gonna just read that up. St. Matthew chapter 26 verse 17 Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread the disciples came to Yeshua saying unto him Where wilt thou 
that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover. And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Go ahead. 19. And the disciples did as Yeshua had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Verse 20. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. 21. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. So, he's getting ready to be crucified, but he's letting his, his disciples know that one of them will betray him. And he's sitting down to eat. And you don't just sit down and commune with just random strangers. You sit down with your people, your family, those who you call family, those who are closest to you. Right? And he's calling them out. He's calling one of them out. Go ahead. 22. And they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? Mm. And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth, as it is written of him. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It has been good for that man if he had not been born. You see that? So the one who was, who was responsible for, for betraying him, he said it's best if that person wasn't even born. To betray the Son of Man. Not taking it in regard of what he's getting ready to do for that same person who's getting ready to betray him. And the thing is, Christ could, Christ could have called him on like, nah, you gotta get out of here. You ain't sitting down with us. You, you ain't breaking bread with me. He could have did that. But he still broke bread with him just to show him that I'm, this sacrifice is for you too. Right? Go ahead. Verse 26. And as they were eating, Yeshua took bread and blessed it and break it. So now verse 26, right? He said what? And as they were eating, Yeshua took bread and blessed it mm -hmm. and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body. So he was this it the bread was a similar was a similitude of what he was about to do with his body. Broken for us. Beaten, battered with his stripes. We were healed. So he was showing them. That was the purpose of it. Right? Go ahead. 27. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. Mm -hmm. For this is my blood of for, the new testament. For this is my blood of the new testament. This is the new agreement. You see that? He's summing it all up. Go ahead. Which is shed for many for the remission of sins. For the what? For the remission of sins. For the remission of sins. Go ahead. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. 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 So be it. Praise the Lord. Our Lord, our Savior, and our King. All oh, praise to the Most High. Definitely. Timely lesson. When the Most High was putting this in my spirit, I was like, I'm trying to figure out which way I'm going to go with it. Then last minute, it just came. All oh, praise to the Most High. Um, at this point in time, we're gonna um, any questions, any comments, real quick. We'll do that. Oh, is on. <laughs> All right, how's everybody doing? Uh, uh, one more time for that lesson. <laughs> You know, I'm not a man of many words, but I feel like this lesson was time we all preach to the most high. And I also feel like it was very time to the um, what we're going into now, many who don't know online, we have brothers and sisters that's getting baptized tomorrow. So God. I feel like it's a great reminder for the, the people who's getting Sunday. baptized Sunday. Sunday. Oh, sorry, tomorrow Saturday. Sunday, the 17th. So it's a great reminder for those who get baptized to know what what was laid down for them to for they get that baptism? So I just want one scripture. Can you get um Hebrews chapter twelve? 
Okay. Just something for those like those who are those who are already baptized and those who are about to get baptized to keep in mind in this walk. Now that we know that Christ laid down his life for us, what we should do going forth and what we should keep in mind. So then start at one. Hebrews chapter twelve, verse one. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with such with so great a cloud of witnesses, uh -huh. let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. So let's lay aside every weight and every sin that keeps us down and keeps us farther away from making it to the kingdom. Read on. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Let us run with patience that is set before us. And with that word patient, we also got to think about Christ and the Most High. Because the Most High in Christ was patient with our people. He long suffered with us through all the sins that we've been through. So every time we feel like giving up, we got to think about how the Most High was patient with us. And we got to say, you know what? Let's be patient. Let's be long suffering. Read on. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. Looking unto Yeshia. Uh huh. The Look author. Unto who? Yeshia. Uh huh. The author. And finisher of our faith. The author and finisher of our faith. Look at how Yeshia, through the Most High, had faith in our people. A lot of us will look at how, how our people operate today and think yeah. when our people will even wake up. Yeah. But they have faith in us. They believe in our people because the covenant that they made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right. You know? Who? For the joy that was set before him. For the joy that was set before him. He's seen the joy of his people. Becoming that great nation, you know, endured the cross. He endured because he knew that his people was greater than what other people thought. So, wait, that's it? No, this is one. Despising the shame mm -hmm. and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Most High. All right, praise the Most High. Praise the Most High. <laughs> Shabbat shalom, you know? Shabbat shalom. It was a, it was a great lesson, man. Yeah, yeah, great lesson, but, uh, I just have a question. Um, you said um, at, at, around the end of the lesson that we, we have to strive for, 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 for perfection. Mm -hmm. And uh, with me, like, at a very young age, that was ingrained in me to be as perfect as I can be. Right. And um, I'm afraid to know, like, when I mess up, bro, like, I... You're beating yourself like, up? Yeah, a lot. A lot. Right. So it's like two scriptures, like what 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 is the perfection in the most high's eyes? How can I find like that vision so I can hold myself to that and have something to hold on to when I do mess up? That's a great question. Let me go to uh let's go to that scripture where it says um It says, Father the Most High, be I perfect? Mm. As I am perfect? Yeah. That's a match. Let me get that scripture real quick. Five and forty-eight, Matthew. Matthew five and forty-eight. Yeah, read that, read that real quick. And I got another scripture on top of that too. Yeah. Say Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Read that again. Say Matthew 5 and 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So be ye perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect, right? Now, what brings us perfection? A lot of people don't understand that in the eyes of the Most High, if you're doing, if you can, if you're, if you're keeping His law, statute, commandments, you're perfect in the eyes of the Most High. You understand? The the standards of this life doesn't make you perfect. Is the standard of the Most High? There's another scripture I want to get to you too, where it says, um, I know one of y'all does with the precepts where it says that the just man be up seven times. Proverbs. 
What songs? Is it one of them? Proverbs 24. Proverbs 16. Oh, let's go. See, look at that. Look at this real quick. Mm, um. So that verse, so that verse um, 15. Look at this. Proverbs 24, 15 to 16. Book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 15. Yeah. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous, spoil not his resting place. Go ahead. For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. So you see that? Even though through the following laws of the Most High, he finds us perfect, but we're still living in the flesh. So when you do fall and you make a, you know, you trip up, whatever the case is, don't wallow in that. That's what the enemy wants you to do. They, they want to continue to play that in your mind because why? They don't have a chance to repent. You can repent. So they want to leave that thought in your mind so you can't get up and rise. It says, it says what? It says, for a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked fall, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Because why? He's not thinking of repent. He's gonna be like, well, this is just the way I am, so you know, I'm gonna just keep doing me. Do not like that. Keep the most high first. Follow, follow after what he wants you to do. And if life happens, you don't stay in that. Repent. Speak to the most high. And do better. Now, you understand? Oh, praises. Oh, so she's seen it. I got you. Um, first of all, it's not excellent, excellent. You already know Passover is my day. Oh, yeah. Holy day. Oh, crazy. Um, just to let you back off of what they were going on, um, something that I think about when I, I think about being perfect in the eyes of the most high, and you know, that can attest to this, but something I, I, I constantly think about is the way I speak to others. You know, James 3 says, um, I'll start at verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all, but if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. So, if you could, if you can speak and not offend somebody, which is very, very hard to do because of many things we offend, you are perfect because you are able to control your, your thoughts, what comes out of your mouth, because what comes out of your mouth is what's from your heart. So if you're speaking good things, then your heart is in the right place. Um, you know. And another thing I think about is when it comes to perfection is pleasing the most high. And the number one thing to please the most high is to simply have faith. And um, Hebrews 11, verse, um, <laughs> verse 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to the Most High must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Bring it out. So, so Khan, like, we want to be perfect, and, you know, because we all fall short. So, these are just some small, some not small, but big things that we can constantly remind ourselves, we know our minds are, to strive for that perfection and be that that um man and woman in your shire that the most high creates and molds. So uh, all praises. Uh, all praises. All praises. Yeah. 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 Same kind of thing. Um, one of the first John chapter two. 
Because to, to, to answer your question, it's not one or two scriptures like you asked. It's the whole book. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I want to read this in First John chapter two, verse five. It says, "But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfect. Hereby we know that we are in him. He that saith, verse six, he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked." Done. The idea of perfection for us is in Christ. Because he conquered everything that we are trying to conquer. You know, if you want to understand the way to be perfected, you read the Gospels. You read it what his disciples wrote. Because they will explain everything that we go through on a daily basis. There's no temptation that is not, not common to man. That we have not always, especially our forefathers, said. Now, thank you. All right, try to do good. Mm. Right. And the last thing I would, I would, I would hit you with is what Nikki said: is faith is a huge aspect. Mm -hmm. Even when our uh, is going through the lesson in Matthew eight, when he spoke to the centurion, he says, "As you believe it, so shall it be." Uh, mm -hmm. Right. Proverbs chapter three, verse five. I kind of know what I'm reading. I'm trying to save myself. <laughs> and a lot of y'all know this too. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. Crystal clear. In all thy ways, mm -hmm. in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord. In the mm -hmm. All praises, all praises. <laughs> Anybody else, real quick? First and foremost, let's give you know officer another round of applause. <laughs> like this and all that. Very edifying and um, you know well needed going into again baptism, right into Passover. It's good to have these things in perspective, not only for the holy days, but throughout our whole walk. You understand that. You know, you shall made the sacrifice for us, so we cannot take that for granted, like you said. Um, some great edification brought forth through, um, you know, Brother Demetrius' um, question, and you know, praise the most high for some of the things I was brought out. Because once you ask a question in my head, I'm just like, that's a lesson. Mm -hmm. you know, that's an entire lesson. Right. And you know, Le Le Levi covered it pretty well and explained like it's a whole book. But in, 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 in a nutshell, you know, uh, uh, you know, what, what my wife brought forth, what Levi brought forth, and, and the lesson, of course, is when I add one more. Um, Colossians chapter three. Colossians chapter three, and we're going to start at verse twelve. It reads as follows. Put on, therefore, as the elect of the Most High, holy and beloved, vows of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these, Things put on charity, which is the bond of perfect, perfectness. So all these attributes, like 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 Paul said, you don't have charity, you don't have love, with everything broke forth, faith, you know, not offending, humbleness, meekness, long suffering, the whole nine. Love ultimately is a is a bond of perfectness. So you seek the perfection of everything broke forth. You gotta seek the gospel, try to be like Christ. Christ forgave, we gotta forgive, we walk in humbleness and weakness, we gotta do the same thing. Don't forget, don't forget love. Time. 
Especially those of you who take the time to, to, to write down every scripture that's really needed. You know, um, keep doing what you guys are doing, man. Um, you know, you support everything you do. And make sure you like our videos so that way more people can come into this knowledge and this truth and we can bring forth this kingdom. Come So, with that being said, we're going to bid you all God's speed. Until next week. Well, next week's Passover. So, I, I believe tune in on, on, on the main page at Gathering 144 for the um, Passover and Feast on Unleavened Bread and all that. Good stuff, right? So we'll see you guys not here next week, but in most high will in Georgia for the Passover. Right. So shalom. Shalom. Right. Um, we're gonna, um, yeah, we're gonna um move to the next phase. The announcements for Sister Mickey before we have our Saturday.